Wait, when the other yeah, guy's coming? Um, I don't know if the, uh, I don't want to wait for them anymore. Because so I don't, uh, don't want to be much with everyone. Uh, everyone's... Okay. Fine. Okay, right. uh, 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 very briefly, the uh, the very first Rashi in this week's parasha. You know, the, the parasha opens up. Emor koim b'nei Aaron v'amartan. Tell them, and again, tell them. Emor v'amartan. So Rashi brings up Chazal from where we learn a very interesting halacha. Lahaz here gedolim alaktanim. And the special halacha that there is by uh, Kohanim, that they're not allowed to come in contact with, uh, with the dead body, but tumat met, that a, uh, a Kohen, that's a gadol, has to take achrayut, has to take responsibility for, the, uh, for a young Kohen who doesn't have uh, presence of mind to avoid contact with the dead. Uh, so it's a very interesting uh, din, which we don't find anywhere else. Because, you know, the, uh, what, we, what any father has to do for a son, midin chinuch, is only midrabanan. And over here, by this special halacha, the Quran have to avoid tumat met, the Torah legislates something uh, midoraita. That he has to, uh, from, from biblical law already, that he has to uh, keep his son away from any type of tumat met. So uh, it's a special halacha that uh, all, of, all of the tariyat mitzvot are for all Am Yisrael. Because even if they don't apply to us, there's something to learn from it. So it's Raui Lit Bonent to think about what this teaches us that the Torah gave a special zirut that the Gedolim have achrayut for the Ketanim, you know, when it comes to Tumat Met. Right? So we know that what Tumat Met really, really represents is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it represents disconnect from Akarish Baruchu. The Pasuk says, Vatem Hadvekim Bashem Lokechem Chaim Kulchem Ayom. When you're Dovik in Akarish Baruchu, that's when you're alive. So today, your dog goes, that's when you're alive. Everyone knows the famous Lashen Chazal, Tzadikim Afil B'mitatan Kruim Chaim. Tzadikim, even when they're dead, they're called alive because their Dveikut from HaKadosh Baruch Hu never ceases. Right? And, and you know, well, what gives us Dveikut in HaKadosh Baruch Hu more than any other Nivra, any other creation? It's because we have a special component called the Neshama. Right? And this Neshama, it, it was given and put into our body for the purpose of Dveikut. In HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that's what all from say. Why does man need a Neshama? Right? Other creatures are alive without a Neshama from heaven. The function of the Neshama is to give connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and it says, Vayipach Ba'apav Neshmat Chaim, Vayadam Lenefesh Chaya. It's right? called the Neshama of life. It gives us our spiritual life. This is the life of Hatem Advekim Ba'ashem Elokeichem. And Mimela, the, the Indian of Tumat Met, represents a situation of disconnect from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, spiritually dead. So the Kohanim, who are chosen to serve in the Beit HaMikdash, that, you know, they're always standing lifnei Hashem. They're always standing before HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so they have this special halacha of avoiding Tumat Met. Right? But they're guarding this Madrega for all Am Yisrael. Yeah. That Am Yisrael is called the Umachaya, the Kuzri says. We're called the living nation. All the other nations are called dead. Right? Because, uh, because we're the nation that they could in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Right? So may we get into this idea that you know, uh, well, on how to do the mitzvahs, there, there's just a chi of midrabanan for a father to uh, educate the son. But where the Torah put real achrayut, a feel midoraita, is that make sure you always keep your dveikas in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So if a person is not mitzvah and mitzvahs, a katan is not lo chayav b'mitzvot, nonetheless, lahazir dolma aktanim, because no Jew should be in a state of choser dveikut in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Every Jew has to be davik in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Dugmat, the mitzvah of mila, brit mila, that you make on a kid, that's not chayiv in mitzvahs, because it also represents dveikut in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that's a Loshim Chazal, kol ha-poresh min orla ke-poresh min kever That's why there's also midraban, you have to you also do a tahar after you have a bris mila, a poresh min orla ke-poresh min kever It's like leaving the grave. It's like coming back to life. Right? <coughs> And it's it's al, al inyan. So now the Bali Hasidus say that Lahazir is Miloshin Zohar. Miloshin to shine. So with this we see a uh, a remez to Lag Baomer that's coming up this week. And it always comes out after Parshat Emor. <coughs> that the uh, it's a very interesting thing that the uh, that the Zohar was Nitgale was revealed in the later generations. It was missing for like three hundred years. No one knew where it was from the Idan of the Tanoim, you know, you know, the middle of the Idan of the Rishonim, right? And, uh, and the Zohar talks about that it was, that it was saved, Ledorin Basroyan, it was saved for the later generations. They'll be on a so, such a low level 
that lahaz here gedolim malaktanim that the, that from we have the tar shirim bayochayos from the, the biggest of the tanoim shining alaktanim on on the lower generation to give chizuk and to drag us up. Right? That you know, the uh, the uh, the and, and that's that's very interesting. The last word in the Zohar, which is uh, the Zohar that we read on Lag Baomer, the Idra Zuta, the Zohar and Parashat, the last thing that Rav Shimon Baruch said was Chaim. Right? As he died, the last word he said was Chaim, and the uh, Bat Kol Kiman said other oh, psukim with the word Chaim, because that's what the Sefer Zohar does. It gives us a connection that we shouldn't die spiritually. It's Mazir, it gives Zohar, it's Lahazir, gives us Or from a very high place from the Edon of the Tanoim, right, to keep us alive. We shouldn't die. Right? And and in Indian Indian, it is also the Bali Hasid to say on, on this in Lahazir Gdol Tanim. If you have sometimes big days, like Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, right? You have to try to bottle that up. So when you have your Khtanim, your little days where you're not feeling any inspiration and you feel almost spiritually dead, Karv Lamisa, you have to draw strength from those big times onto those small times, right? And that's the Indian that the Hasidim Arishan, the Gemara says, that they used to, it's, it, it took three hours, one hour before, one hour during, one hour after. So uh, the Mephoshim asked, what? <laughs> I said the hour before, they're preparing. What's the hour after? No, they, they sat and they internalized it. They meditated, they wanted to absorb the experience and store it up. Lahazir Gedolim Alaktanim, you know, you need those big spiritual times, you need to store them up, that they should shine alaktanim on those small days when you're feeling small and spiritually close to death. So I want to just tell one story. It's a documented story that illustrates this point. You know, because we, we have one day a week where we have this Yom Gadol, right? And that's Shabbos. And we have to try to bottle up Shabbos. And that's the end of Malava Malka, to try to bottle it up. That should shine on the small days of the week, where, which are spiritually small. That should shine from the big times to the small times. The story I read, uh, was a, uh, uh, the scribe who wrote it up, the story, the writer said he heard it from the Bala Masa, that uh, a bacher, a yeshiva bacher, we'll call him Yitzchak, uh, once uh, you know, heard about the milus of Shabbos Kodesh. Shabbos Kodesh is not just a day of you know, refraining from work, but it's a day of spiritual inspiration and mochin the godless, like gedolim, like we said, you know, having a higher spiritual intelligence, a day of very great spiritual power. And he did whatever he could, you know, to try to get a spark of that, you know, was Makbet to go on the mikveh of Shabbos, took in Shabbos early, and, you know, said Shira Shirim when his makab was all the different things that, you know, the hands. And then there was one week where he just hit the jackpot. Yeah, when Shabbos came, he felt this unbelievable inspiration for 24 hours. He could barely sleep, he could barely eat on spiritual fire, and the whole world looked different. So everything in Ace from a spiritual perspective. Unbelievable. And then came the next Shabbos, he wanted to recreate the experience, he couldn't. Try it again, the week after, nothing. You know, I spoke to a Rebbe about it, he says, listen, you know, you know, it's, you, know you can't know how, you know, there's no, it's, an, you know, it's an Indian of Mazo, an Indian of Ace Rotson, when the Kodesh Baruch wants to give it to you, it's not, you know, you can't just demand it, you keep on trying. Two years went by. Never had an experience like that again. And he was beginning to wonder that he must have, uh, you know, he must have imagined the whole thing. No? And another few months go by, and, you know, so if he gave up on ever feeling Shabbos Kodesh, but he also started losing Tom Belimud. He started also lose, getting, stopped getting Geshmak from his learning and from the whole yeshiva experience. Started burning out. Right? And, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, was fall, falling into a lower and lower state. From crisis to crisis, he left yeshiva. And then, you know, uh, got involved with the internet and uh, hooked up with uh, a group, you know, what they call Motsim B'Sheila, right, those who try to get kids. They mamas try to ensnare kids to become fry. You know, secular Israelis that feel that they're saving the youth by. You know, and he, uh, he got involved with that group. He started corresponding with them. And they had, you know, and they have their clever arguments, they, you know, to totally desensitize you and they, they're like the capstone of like how they finally pull you in into the secular world is they offer you a, a Friday to you. They don't actually mention or come today Chilul Shabbos because you know, so you could rationalize maybe it'll be back on time. You know, Friday to you with boys and girls camping, swimming together a little bit 
you know, but everyone who really thinks about it knows that there's no way to come back to life. Once you get a guy to be Mechal Shabbos, it's over. You've cut his lifeline. And, you know, and he signed up, you know, not willing to admit to himself that this is, you know, really burning his bridge. So, amongst the stops that they made, you know, as I said, they advertised swimming. So they found a little natural body board, a little swimming hole, right? And uh, the boys and girls are swimming together. And he's, you know, took a dive. And when he's underwater, just, you know, a thought just flashed across his head. Stop, I thought, you know, isn't it ironic? I'm being toivel, being toivel in Mayim Chayim, the covered Shabbos Kodesh. And the thought just like, for a second. And then that engine that he couldn't get to turn over for three years started burning with all the turbines flaring. He's like, Shabbos Kodesh. An explosion happened inside of him. And that experience that he had three years earlier came back full force. He jumped out of the water, threw on his clothes, just ran out to the road and hitched a ride back to a Frum community, and he made his way back to Yeshiva. That's Lahaz Yodontan. That one big experience, it's never lost. It's there, and it'll shine on you when you most need it. Right, but it's Kedai always, when you have a big day, to try to internalize it and make sure it'll be there, be easier, more easy to access when you really need it. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wow, right. I, I, sounded like a very good I want to introduce, I didn't have a chance to introduce, jump straight in.